Good morning. My name is Prophetess Angela Richardson. Prophetess Angela Richardson, I'm going to get on and do a short teaching um, today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer before I get into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that everybody that come on this live or on the replay, they will, they will learn uh, their proper place in you, God, so they can start moving in, in your will for their lives right now in Jesus' name. Because we know when we move in the will of God for our, for our lives, that's when we're most happy. That's when we're most productive right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray right now. For everybody that comes on this live or the replay, that they will see the calling that's on their lives and they begin to walk out on the calling that's in their lives, on their lives. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So the subject is, hey, Prophet Selena, how you doing? Hey, Pastor C, how you doing? Um, the, my subject is today is moving in the will of God for our lives, moving in the will of God for our lives. So it's just so very important that we do move in the will of God for our life because we don't want to be just doing something and, and, you know, just doing something, be doing something, you know what I'm saying? And not making no progress because, you know, in this walk of life that we're in, we want to be all, we always want to be on in great alignment with the Lord. We all, always want to be on one accord with the Lord. And so we can, um, be most effective, you know, because it's a lot of people that's tied to us, making it, you know, allowing God to work in us to get us to that uh, specific level in him. So it's a lot of people that's tied to us, get us getting our deliverance, I, us get uh, tied to us, us getting to um, where God wants to take us to. So it's so many people tied to us. So it, we'll have to, you know, continue to move forward in God, you know, regardless, you know, just like I, you know, with me, I, you know, I had surgery on Monday and now. I'm sitting here with a sling on, but you know, I, you know, I had already committed myself to doing teachings on Thursday. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. You know, I'm not going to let that, allow that to stop me. A lot of times, a lot of things go on in our lives, you know, and, and it stops us from moving forward. It stops us because the enemy, that's what he wants to do. He wants us to have, he, I, I could have got up this morning having a pity party. I could have been complaining about it's hard to put much clothes on or whatever. But uh, I kept been practicing. You know, I started Monday been practicing how to put them on to the most efficiency so that I won't hurt my hurt this arm. You know, but I just thank God for even you know just walk continue to walk out in Him and doing what He's He's requiring me to do. And the, the scripture I'm going to use here is Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. To trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. And number six said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. So if as long as I'm acknowledging God, he's going to direct my path. You know, when I got up this morning, I said, well, Lord, I said, I know I'm supposed to be teaching on the line. I said, give me a word because I didn't even have a word. I'm like, I don't even know what you want me to say, you know. But, you know, at the end, you know, just before I was getting on here, he gave me a word. And uh, as I was reading over and I was studying on it, uh, that we don't need to lean to our own understanding, you know, because God has a purpose for our lives. You know, a lot of times, you know, I know like Prophet Escape said she was going to go to school to be a doctor. And the Lord told her, no, he wanted to go in for full time ministry. So, you know, we just have to be obedient to what God is telling us to do because it's a purpose. It's, you know, if she would have never went in full time ministry, you know, may, I probably wouldn't have wrote, wrote, wrote the books out that I wrote. And uh, a lot of other people wouldn't have wrote the books that they wrote. And she was would have gone, gone do what she wanted to do instead of doing what God had told, required her to do. So it's so very important that we be obedient to what God is telling us to do. Uh, said so we have to be obedient to God's will for our lives so we won't keep going around that same mountain expecting different results you know i think it was uh i don't know who it was confucius or somebody was saying it's, it's insanity to keep to keep going around the same mountain and expecting different results so we want we don't want to keep going around that same mountain because the word of god said we can speak to that mountain and it has to move so we don't want to keep going around that same mountain we want to we want to continue to mature in god we want to continue to grow up in god go deeper in god go higher in god we want to continue to do that we don't want to be mediocre we don't want to be just bench bench warmers you know what i'm saying you know back in the day you know that's how it was you know we didn't i didn't know the gifts that was in me you know and like god has thought just uh recently start revealing a lot of but i just thought i you know just go to church sit on the bench hey you know and, you know, but God wants us to um, be participants, even in our, our ministries, 
in our churches that we belong to. He wants to be participants. We we shouldn't just be sitting down and letting our leaders do all the, you know, all the work, you know, you know, because I, I just thank God for the ministry that I'm in, in at this time, you know, with the leaders we have, uh, Apostle um, Choi and Pastor C, you know, they want everybody to work, uh, the, uh, work in the gift and that's on their lives, you know, and that's, that's very rare with a lot of ministries. Not that I'm beating up no ministries, but that is, is kind of rare. <coughs> These silence is draining. But that's kind of rare, you know, in um in a lot of churches, you know, because they most most uh ministries they will put you where they want you to put put you at instead of what God is telling them to push put you at in that spot in that spot of position. But I, I just thank God that for the ministry that we're in that they want everybody else to Everybody walk in their gifting because it'll make the whole thing run smoothly if everybody walk in the gifting that's on their lives. So how do you know God's will for our lives? It's ask God. So if we if we don't know God's will for our lives, we need to ask Him. Cause like I said, I didn't know it a couple months ago because I got in this class, um, a class of the appointed by Dr. Alicia Ware. And when I got in there, I was in there with all these other prophets, and I was like, Lord, why am I in this class with all these other prophets? And he said, because you need to be in here. I was like, really? I you know, and I, you know, the enemy was talking to me the whole time. And that first night I got on there, the enemy kept talking to my mind. You don't need to be in here. This is too advanced for you. You're, are you in here? And all these other prophets, you don't need to be in here. And I was like, no. I said, well, the Lord kept saying, you know, yeah, you need to be in here. You need to be in there before, before, because of a reason, you know, because of the calling that he has on my life. The more I learn, the better off I'll be, you know, said, um, he will tell you who you are. So if you ask him, he'll tell you who you are. Because in there, I didn't know, like I said, I ain't never know who I was. You know, I people, a lot of people were prophesying who I was. I was like, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not feeling that. You know what I'm saying? But when I got in her class and she told us to um, pray and ask God who you were. So I prayed. And I asked him. He said, oh, and he said he did say prophetess. I said, okay. Okay, so you know that goes back to all these other prophecies out of that some the Lord has allowed some different ones, men and women of God, to come to me and and and, and tell me who I am, you know. But you know, a lot of times, you know, we don't want to receive it, you know. We still want to be doing our thing, you know. We don't want to, and a lot of times with with a lot a lot of these offices come warfare, and of course we don't want the warfare because you know, like that warfare ain't no joke because you got to be rooted and grinding in the Word of God, put on the full armor of God every day to be able to go uh, um to combat the wiles of the enemy because he gonna come at you all kind of ways because he knows what you like, he knows what you've been delivered of, you know. If you like that, me, I was delivered of. Anger. So guess what? He gonna bring some some um scenarios, some episodes in my life to see if I'm really delivered from anger. If see if I'm gonna really show out, or you know if I'm be uh, if I'm gonna be calm about whatever he's doing, you know, because we got to we got to realize that's the enemy. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came that Jesus came that we have life and life more abundantly. So of course he gonna do he gonna do everything he can to get you knock you off balance. He gonna do everything he get can to make you uh, doubt God's word concerning you. He going to do everything he can to doubt, you know, even um, he'll use other people, you know, that may not even see the uh, the calling or the gift on your life to say, tell you what you're not. But no, we can't, we can't go by that. We got to go by what God is saying. God said, I am this and that's who I am. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but he, if you don't, if you don't know, if you really don't know who you are, ask God who you are. Just ask him. He'll tell you. Just like I did at night. I asked him. And he told me. I was like, what? What? For real? You know what I'm saying? I said, okay, God. So if that's if you said that's who I am. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm getting in classes to learn more about that gifting, to walk in that gifting, getting around other people, to meet, meet mentored in that area. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know anything about it. You know, I've seen plenty of them. You know, I've seen different people prophesying. I've seen different women, the women of God prophesying, you know, but I, you know, I, I didn't know about that office personally. So what God has me doing is taking classes, you know, it's nothing wrong with taking classes you, to better yourself. There's nothing wrong buying books, reading books and different things. There's nothing wrong with that because, you know, uh, you know, so we can um uh, attain more knowledge. Some, to, like the word they said, that, that knowledge, it, more knowledge is, is power. The more knowledge you have, it's more you uh, more you can walk in, in that power. So it's best to know, you know, and not because one thing about with God, he's not just going to throw us out there anyway. He's going to equip 
equipped us. You know, we're not a, uh, we, I'm not, I wasn't equipped, but he has been taking me through classes. You know, when I see a class on a uh, line or, or Facebook or whatever, and I ask, I said, Lord, do you need me to take that class? Is that class for me? Yes or no? He'll say yes. Or sometimes he'll say no. I said, okay. So the ones he say yes, I go ahead and um, contact those people, get it, get signed up, get in them classes. And you know, a lot of times you'll say, in the enemy, Want to make you fearful of the unknown, but God wants you to be. God wants us to be operating in the supernatural, you know, because that's that's supposed to be natural for the body of Christ. We should be operating in the supernatural on twenty four seven. People should be getting healed, delivered, and set free on a, a regular, continuous basis. So it's so. Hey, Apostle Claudette, how you doing? So it's so very important that we allow God to grow us up in those positions and grow us and mature us up in those positions. You know, with Pastor Claudette, now she has a class too. Now it's free. Uh, every month she do, we do like two weeks of, of classes and, um, she just, you know, just, um, start waking up some things in you, some gifts that you don't even know you had, you know, creative gifts, you know, that you didn't know you had. Now, I mean, this is a, she has a excellent class, you know, for anybody that, they may think about it. Just go, you know, go and get on in her class, you know, go on her shift to elevate page on Facebook and you'll find out what her next class is. And it's like we go on Zoom. It's like, you know, it's like a one on one class setting and we go on Zoom and she speak, they speak that word, speak the word of God in you because everything that she's doing is coming from the word of God. It's not. It's not leading to her own understanding. Everything that she's teaching is coming from the word of God because you can always, she always give you the word. We always read out the, out the Bible. We, you know, read out the Bible, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, everything she's doing is, you know, is it, what it is, is God's putting those people in, in, in places for us to help us. God is putting those people in those places to help us, you know, so you can go in there. Go over there for two weeks. Said Monday through Friday for two weeks, and you know, cause last the last when she first had the class, I got in there, and you know, she just you know, she just see God has showed her the calling that's on your life, and she began to call address you as that calling that's on your life. So if you didn't never know then, but when you got in that class, and she began to address you as who you are in in Christ, then you say, oh, okay, I am, you know, that's who I am. But what I'm saying is, she'll teach you, she'll, she'll go to teach you everything that you would need to know, you know, in those two weeks time, you know, she's consolidated together or whatever. And, you know, in the last, cause the last time we, I, when I was in her class, the first time, you know, it was some, in this class, I just got out of, it was something totally different because in this class we did a vision board, you know, so, so it's, it's just to help us. God has people in put in place to help us, you know, so a lot of times we don't may not know the avenues that God has opened the doors for us to be able to take these classes, but you know, that's why I brought it up when I saw her on here. Let me go ahead and, and, and shout out to her because this class had really took me to a whole nother level because when I was in there that first time and uh, she was she was uh, doing impartations and said she, when we got out of there we was going to prophesy like she was prophesying and next thing you know I was I got up one that morning I was and I was after I got to praying and I was saying Lord I said who you want me to talk to today who who you want me to speak in life into today so he gave me a bunch of names and I went down the list next thing you know I was prophesy I had him prophesy like ten people in one day you know but so and that's what God wants us to do He wants to grow us up in those areas. So he put those, put the people up, the women of God in our place, you know, to help us, mentor us, to get us to that next level in him. And it's because it's so very important that we have a mentor, you know, we, with our pastor, with our pastor, uh, Apostle Troy and Pastor C, you know, th they're our mentors. And not only that, God has given us other mentors, Prophetess K, uh, Dr. Delisha Ware, uh, 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 Apostle Claudette, you know, in all of us, and, uh, when, when you're having all of them working, you know, you know, you can mentor uh, um, glean from every one of them, you know, because everyone has their own ministry, their own ministry style, and you can glean for each one of them. But you all gonna, they always gonna lead you back to Jesus. Now they ain't gonna try to take you nowhere else, but they gonna lead you to Jesus, and that's so very important that we be led to Jesus, even even with me. The guy has me teaching this and uh, uh speaking on Facebook Live. I'm gonna lead people to Jesus because I am just a vessel. I'm the, you know, I, you know, I, the Holy Ghost lives inside of me. But I'm just a vessel God has, has, has want to use to let everybody else know of maybe the avenues that I've, I've the classes I've taken. So, if you know, if you know, if it's all right, God, God is not going to be angry with you taking those classes. It's, it's going to help you because, hey, you know, remember about David when David, um, 
when uh they when, when he was um anointed to be king, he was a little child, you know, and he had to grow up into that into that um um kingship, you know. So it's 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 just like with us, you know. We when we uh, find out who we are in Christ, you know, it's gonna take a process uh, till we grow up into that full maturity in that area. So it's so very important. Said so James one five and six said, if you want to know what God wants you to do, just ask Him. And he would gladly tell you. So the word of God said, if we need wisdom, we'll ask of God and he would give it to us generously. So if we need wisdom on any subject, we need to ask God, you know, and not lean to our own understanding. Because if we try to lean to our own understanding, we're going to end up messing it up, you know. You know, many times I led to my own understanding, you know, like, man. And then after I got in there, I was like, oh, Lord. You know what I'm saying? But um, I just thank God for the for the men and women of God he has placed all around us so we can glean from, you know, for the um, for whatever um, calling that's on their lives. You know, we can glean from them. We can grow more and more in God. You know, because God wants us to grow. He don't want us to stay stagnant. You know, you know, when uh, someone is stagnant or when, you know, water is stagnant, you know, it, it, it just it's sitting still. It don't have no fresh water going into it. And so it's it not it's not moving, you know, but a, a, but a, a river that's flowing that has fresh water continue to flow through it. You know, the more it can grow. And next thing you know, it's, it's maybe start out as a little creek. Next thing you know, it's a um, uh, it maybe had gone on to a little pond. Next thing you know, it's a lake, you know, and that's what God wants to do. He wants us to continue to grow more in him said when it has been revealed to you your purpose in life now you can start taking classes and gleaming from someone who is already operating in that capacity so you can learn from them as you continue to mature in your walk with the lord so we just like i said we got we got the we got to get the information you no know, we ain't no island i'm not an island by myself I, I i can't do it by myself and god wants me to reach out to other people so they can uh, be a blessing to me uh, so they can give me some importations, you know, and keep me encouraged. I always got to encourage the word. Said contrary to what the enemy may be implying, God is not trying to hide hide anything from you from you god ain't trying to hide nothing from us concerning our calling he wants us to know who we are in him he wants us to even to walk in that office that he has he has called us to walk in he said it is god's desire for each of us to know the calling that that he that he has on our lives and his will for our lives he wants us to know that calling and will for our lives so we won't be in over there doing something that's way out of our lane you know just like with me i'm a i'm, I'm an author and i get on here and do my facebook lives you know i don't want he don't want me over there doing um uh, starting up, you know, a boys club or whatever. That's not that's not my grace. He want me to stay in the grace that he has given us, given me. So that may be somebody else's grace, but he want us to um to continue to move forward in him because it's so very important, you know. Because I, you know, with me, I want to be all I can be in Christ. I want to do everything he has acquired has required for me to do. I want to I want to operate in all the gifts that he wants me to operate in. And, uh, you know, because we know with those gifts, you know, we have to love is the key to all those gifts working like they're supposed to. We have to have the love and compassion for everybody, other people, you know, and not just worry about all our, ourselves all the time. But we have to have love and compassion for other people as well. So when you have major decisions that you need to make, we need to pray and consult God on the matter to see what he says concerning it. So we have major decisions, just like with me, with my, my, my shoulder, that was a major decision for surgery. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I had to pray about it and ask God about it. I said, God, what, what I need to do? Because, you know, when I first found out, you know, when it was first hurting and I had to have that injection and then I thought, I said, oh, it's going to work. This injection going to work. Like a month later, like, uh-uh, that it feeling had come back up in there. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do next? And so he just said, go back to the doctor. So I went back to the doctor, and they did an MRI, and they found out they had those three tears, you know. But I just thank God, you know, even with that, you know, I, I prayed about it. I said, well, Lord, do you want me to have surgery? Is surgery is the way it's going to be fixed? He said, yeah. But, you know, I just thank God for when I did go back Monday, to have my surgery that when the 
um, my husband said that when the surgeon called him on the phone, was telling him about what he all he had done. He said he he was telling him that those two it was three tears that the tear that was in my um a uh, roto cuff and the tear that was in my bone uh um uh, bone the little joint thing how the joint you know how the joint. The arm joint go together. He said, my ball joint. He said, those tears was healed. And I was like, wow, that's that's God. You know, that, that ain't nothing I did. That's God, you know, that the prayers of the righteous availed much. Because plenty of people have been praying for me, you know, praying for my arm and everything. And, I, you know, I receive it by faith. You know what I'm saying? And so when he... When he told my husband that only one he had to fix was my my uh, the tendon because it was a tear in my tendon plus it was bone spurs that was laying on my tendon so that's the only thing he had to fix you know I just think I was thanking God for that because the whole time you know while I was waiting on surgery I began to feel like I I, I began to feel this like my arm was healed I said Lord it ain't hurting like it was hurting when he, when I first found out about it because it, it was first when I was first. Hurt. It was like throbbing like a toothache. You know, anybody know how the toothache hurt? It was just throbbing like a toothache, toothache, and it felt like bone was against bone. And I was like, and the next, you know, just just before I get ready to have surgery, it wasn't even hurting like that. You know, it wasn't even a pain to me like that. And I was like, Lord, is you doing something in this arm? I said, Lord, I, I know you're doing something in this arm. And so then when after I had the surgery, and then I found out that God had already healed two areas of, of, of my shoulder. And I just thank God for that because it was nothing I done, you know, but it was through the, his grace and mercy that he already healed that area. And he's doing that because he, he wants to build my faith, not only my faith, but there's some people on him on this, maybe come on this live or maybe on the prayer line that he needs to build their faith as well. Their faith has to be black, need to be built as well. So we, we know, no, so it doesn't matter what is going on with us. God cares about everything that we concern about. And he know, I was concerned about my arm because I couldn't raise it up high. You know, I could only raise it so far. You know, I didn't have full range of motion in it. And if I ra raised it so far, then I, it was like the, that pain was, was, I mean, that pain was something serious, you know, trying to raise it at a certain level level but God wanted me to have free range of motion in that arm he wanted me to to be able to um use it because he I have God has so much ministry left in me you know I'm just he, he just birthed thought birthing a lot of stuff out of me so it's so much ministry left in me and I had told him I said Lord I, how I'm gonna be able to do everything that you require me to do and I can't even lift my arm I can't even do things that I need to do in my for my arm you know because Concerning my arm, he said, "Well, okay, we just we gonna do surgery. So surgery is gonna be how it's gonna be fixed." And you know, and I thank God for what the for he what he had done already before I had the surgery. And so, so it is truly a blessing because God cares about, like I said, everything that you're concerned about. You know, if you're aching in your body anywhere, you know, just start decreeing and declare the word of God over yourself. You know, get you some scriptures, go in there and get you some healing scriptures and start decreeing and declare the word of God over yourself. Go, God is a healer. I am a witness that he's a healer. You know, I, you know, I, that's why I tell my testimonies. I don't, you know, I don't feel uh, some type of way about my testimonies, even if some things I've did in the past, you know, and God has delivered me from. I'm going to tell it because I want to be able to help somebody else. Faith get to the level my faith is you know because my faith and you know um i am a true woman of god true woman of faith because i believe god because i he has took me through some things in the past you know he has healed my body and from things in the past healed me a high blood pressure i was talking to the ladies when i was in um getting ready to go in surgery they got come and got me to go in to, um to do a um they did a, a nerve block they went in my neck and did a nerve block on my arm and so while they was in there, they was taking my vita signs and everything. And I was, they said, oh, you got the perfect set of vita signs. And I said, thank you. I said, God healed me of high blood pressure. They said, what? I said, in, I said, in the year of 2009, 10, 11, I said, I was having high blood pressure problems. And, um, and I was on blood high blood pressure pills, and one of the side effects with the blood pressure medicine was a cough. I always had a cough, you know, that was the side effects of the blood pressure medicine. I said, but God has healed me. I said, every time somebody take my blood pressure, I get so excited because I know God had healed me of that high blood pressure. So now when you, like I said, when she said, when she was, I was up on that table, she said, 
And she, I, she said, you're just as calm as you want to be. I said, because God had already gave me a piece about the surgery. God had already gave me a piece about it. I, he let me know I didn't have anything to worry about because he was going to be fixed through surgery. So, I, yes, I had a piece about myself as I was laying on that, you know, on that table before they got ready to take me back there in the back. They did that, um, that nerve, the nerve block. So they went in my neck and, and did a nerve block and, um, so they, so my arm would be numb. My arm was numb. It was, and when I came home, it was still numb. It didn't get unnumb to yesterday. Then it start, uh, the feelings start coming back in it. But I, you know, I just thank God, you know, because, you know, he gives these doctors the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to do these surgeries to the best of their ability. So I know it wasn't nobody but God, you know, to even go for us, for me to even go that route, you know, and I just thank God for that. He said, Matthew 7 and 7, said, ask, seek, knock, ask, and it shall be given to you. So we need to ask, ask, it shall be given unto you. And I think our apostle, our, my apostle was preaching that Sunday about uh, a lot of things we don't get because we ain't want to open our mouths and we won't speak it. You know, we, uh, I mean, power of life and death is in our tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you want certain things to happen in your life or your marriage or whatever, start speaking what the word of God declares over it. Don't speak what you see. But speak what you don't see, but speak what you want to see. You want to see healing and deliverance in your in your marriage? Speak healing and deliverance in your marriage. You want to see your husband saved? Speak, speak, go ahead and start speaking that he's already saved. Full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Go ahead and speak that. that he already say he might not be acting like it, but you you continue to speak it. And the next thing you know, guess what? It's going to start manifesting in his life. He said, knock and the door will be open for you. So we have to knock, knock. Ask, seek, and knock. I mean, those are action words. They, you know, ask, seek, and knock. Those are action words. We got to move. We got to do something. You know, God, we, uh, we know God's going to do his part. Then we got definitely got to do our part. He said, for everyone who asks, receives. Verse 8 said, for everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. So this, this, this is, this answer to that first, to verse 7. If you, if you will ask, you will receive. And if you will seek, you will find. And if you will not, the door will be open. But we got to do something. We got. We just can't keep our mouth closed and expect different things to happen in our lives. We got to speak things in existence because that's what Jesus, what God did. He spoke the world in existence. And if He had to speak the world in existence, don't you know we got to speak some things that so forth that manifest in our lives? Say God is open, open, able to open and close doors in our in our life for our favor. You know, God is able to open and close doors in, in our favor in our life because a lot of doors that's open, it, it may not, it may be a good idea, but it's not a God idea. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, God, a lot of time he closes doors on us when we want to lean to our own understanding. And just for example, I'm going to give you this testimony. When um, me and my husband, we had been married a while and we was living in a mobile home. And we was going to church over in, like maybe 35 miles from where we, where, we, where we was living at originally. And then we had in our mind that we want to move over there. And every time we would go get a, try to we'd go look at a house, they always had, it, it, it was either the rent was too high or, you know, uh, they, didn't want to, they didn't want to rent it. They wanted to sell it and everything. And, you know, our credit wasn't good at that time. And every time we would try to go over there, we go look at a house, and then next thing you know, the door, that door closed, that door closed, that door closed. And guess what? God was letting us know, hey, this ain't where I'm calling you to. And I'm glad we didn't. I was telling my husband the other day, I'm glad we didn't move over there because that ain't what that wasn't where God was call, calling us to. But that's what we was leading. Hey, Prophet Terror, how you doing? But we was leading to our own understanding. We thought, we was thinking that that was where we were supposed to be at. But God said, no, that is not where you're supposed to be at. So every time we kept trying to move over there, he kept closing that door. He said, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, y'all ain't going there. Y'all ain't moving there. Y'all ain't moving there. And so I said, wow, we just like, wow, we just going to give up, you know. So we just gave up, you know, and not even tried. We kept on doing what we were supposed to do. Just kept going to church, doing what he was telling us to do. And then, um, so... Which is, I'm glad that you know that God closed that door because we wouldn't have, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are now, even in Christ. I don't think we would be even where we are now, even in our spiritual walk with God, because of the. I like I say, I'm not talking about anybody, but because of the leadership that was there, it you know that that leadership was there, it was to to the point that 
they didn't really want you operating in your gift and they just wanted the, the finance part of it. I'm, I'm just going to be real. They just only wanted the finance part of it. They wasn't really keen about you operating the gift that you, that God has required of you. To, you know, they was just wanting the, the financial part of it. And I mean, I'm just going to be real with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, but so God put us in a, the ministry that we are in now, you know, with our apostle uh, Troy and pastor C, they want us to operate in the gifts that God has put in us. So the church can run even more smoother when everybody else is, everybody's walking in the gifts that God has put on their lives. You know, and we, we get all, you know, everything can work smoothly you know one person don't have to try to run and do everything that we all can do it as a team and that's what God want uh, and require of us to do it as a team we always whatever we gonna do we gonna lead people back to Jesus we gonna leave them back to Jesus we ain't leading to our own understanding we ain't trying to lead them to you know somewhere way over there but we gonna lead them back to Jesus we gonna always lead them back to Jesus and then I just thank God you know for the, you know, like I said, for the ministry that I'm in now, because, you know, they, they really love you. They care for you, you know, and they want to see you ex uh, excel. They're not jealous of you. I don't care. You know, they ain't jealous. They, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, and that's a rarity, you know, you know, which I know is other leaders like that, but I just, you know, I'm, I, they, I am not a member of their church, but I am a member of this church. So, um, that's why I'm, 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 I'm saying what I'm saying because, you know, true men and women of God, you know, who really want you to operate in the gift and that's on your life, you know, and they ain't trying to hold you back. They ain't trying to make you sit over there in the corner that, you know, you know what I'm saying. But, you know, I just thank God for that. He said right here, he said, like I said, the doors keep closing, then that ain't where you're supposed to be at. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you know, even if in relationships, you know, a lot of time we'll we we'll, we'll um wanting to be married or whatever we wanna date, you know, be dating everything. And a lot of times if that person that you you know, you'll you you may be uh sweet on or whatever, if they are not ready, then you know that door gonna stay closed, you know, because God's not gonna put you with anybody that's not ready. If you're a woman of God, God wants you with to be with a man of God, you know. And, you know, so somebody that's not going to fight against you, fight against the calling that's on your life. Somebody that's going to dare to help push you up, you know, with the calling that on your life. Because, you know, marriage is more than just, you know, uh, attraction. Marriage is, is much more than that. M marriage is a ministry that, you know, you know, um, that whatever we may have went through in our past. Now we can mentor some other, you know, other young people or maybe some older people that may be going through whatever we ever went through and they can, we can let them know how God has delivered us and he's able to deliver them because God is no respect of person. What he has done for me, he's able to do it for anybody on this life in Jesus name. So we just have to, you know, you know, just, just let God do what he want to do in us. It's so very important. He said, um, then it may be that God is the one that is keeping you from these things. You know, when the door kept, he was, he was the one keeping us from, from moving over there because he said, hey, cause I, I told my husband, I said, we'd have moved over him over there. We'd have been miserable right now. We'd have been really miserable. I said, but I thank God for him closing them doors and we paying attention that it was him closing them doors, you know? And so we went on. And now we're over in another area, you know, got a, you know, in a better home, you know, better area, uh, in a better ministry. You know what I'm saying? I just thank God for that. Uh, but we just have to be obedient. Don't override the spirit of God when he's trying to tell you something. He's trying to warn you of anything. Don't override that spirit because he's trying to keep you from being hurt. Oh, he's trying to keep you from being in a relationship that's going to tear your whole world apart. So, you know, be be obedient to what the Holy Ghost is telling you. If he's telling you, no, that ain't it. He ain't the one. Then, hey, he ain't the one. Let's keep on going. Because God has a special person that he has picked out for you. That's going to be a blessing to you. Not going to be a hindrance to you. That's going to bring something to the table. You know what I'm saying? You know, so um, you just wait on God. Be patient and wait on God. Because God something has something so perfect for you that when you get it, you're like, you're going to be blown away. Your mind is going to really be blown away. He said, we need just to practice patience because God's want, God wants to give each and every one of us his best, his very best. God don't want, you don't, you know what I'm saying? He want his very best, you to have his very best. Even if it's a, a spouse, he wants you to have his very best. So that's why a lot of time that we're praying, we need to pray and be specific. Because what kind of man of God we want? We want a man of God. We want a true man of God that love God. That if they already love God, then they know how to love me. You know what I'm saying? And not just pray for any old thing. Because when we get that, you know, we don't want to be compromising. We want something that's going to 
a relationship that's going to take us to the next level in God so we can grow in God together and we can get stronger in God together and, and one one spouse ain't no ain't jealous of the other spouse that we all in this thing together we as one and so that's what God wants for his people it says so if you're refu so if you're refusing Oh, so, so if, okay, so if you're rushing, trying to do something instead of taking your time, then you, you need to stop. Don't, don't rush. Do not rush. Do not rush on anything. Take your time because there's a reason why God wants you to take your time. And a lot of times he had to grow up that man to be your husband. You know, they may, they may have been married before, you know, but you know, they, they been dealing with a lot of other things, you know, the disappointments in their, you know, the marriage before or whatever. So he has to grow them up, you know, get some things out of them. And guess what? He got to get some things out of us, you know, so we can, um, we can be, when we join together, we can be as one. And you know that the three core strand is not easily broken when the Holy Spirit is in our relationship with Jesus in our relationships that we should be able to get along good. You know, we somebody need to take down. Everybody can't be right all the time. You know what I'm saying? You know, us ladies, no, you know, sometimes we want to be right all the time, you know, but you know, we can't be right all the time because, you know, we got, you know, we got the take down, you know, so we can keep peace and harmony in our homes. So you may end up in something that was really for you, but because you didn't want to wait, now you may end up with the wrong person or wrong relationship. So, you know, when you don't want to wait, you end up with the wrong relationship or with the wrong person. And like, like I said, everything that glitter ain't gold, honey. And just like, the, you know, you may think the grass is green on the other side. But when you get over there, you see they just got it spray painted. But what I'm just saying is, you know, just be, just be obedient to what God is telling you to do. Wait on God. Wait on God. Wait on God. Wait on God and lead not to your own understanding. I'm saying don't do that because I did that in the past and I caught it. I'm just saying I'm I'm I, I'm the type of person I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm not gonna get on here trying to sugarcoat it or in oh uh, you know what I'm saying I'm gonna be real with y'all. When I was trying to lead to my when I wasn't trying I was I was leading to my own understanding. I was in two other marriages and they both of them was domestic violence. You know what I'm saying? And the reason I kept getting in those type of relationship because I was still wounded. And I didn't allow God to come inside of my heart and heal me from those po them, that trauma and those wounds from my past. And so what I did was, you know, so so it was just like as I was walking when I was going different places, and I it's as if I had a sign on my forehead saying, "Hey, I'm the one. Come to me." You know, what I'm saying because they're wounded. When you wounded people attract wounded people. And, you know, and if you're a healed person, you don't want a wounded person, you know, and it's not your job. You're not God to try to fix somebody up. Let God fix them up because God can only fix them up the perfect way. You know what I'm saying? So we just have to be mindful of what we're doing. We'll, you need to make sure that if you are. It get you know in any type of relationship, but in, uh, if somebody has asked you to marry them or whatever, make sure you done prayed and ask God and ask God if this is the one. And you know, and sometimes you may have to even add a fast to it. Fast, fast for like three days or whatever, and ask God. God is this the one? And if God said no, don't force it because if you force it. You're going to live a whole lot of pain, you know, emotionally, physically, you know, just like I did out with the, the, the best, the violence. It was verbal. It was sexual, um, um, physical, you know, every, every emotional, every kind of was, it was, that was it. It was it. That's what I went through. And it took me a lot of years, you know, to get healed from all that, you know, from all that, you know what I'm saying? To, to feel like that, to, so I can see that I'm, I'm worth more than, than those relationships. God have, God wants me to have a man of God in which he has given me a man of God now, but that because I had allowed God to come in and do some things in me because, Hey, you know, after I done dealt with all those people that I still have all that baggage. So I have to get rid of all that baggage. I have to allow the Lord to come in and help me get rid of all that baggage. So when I get into my new marriage, like I am now with my husband, I won't bring all that excess baggage with me. And I won't stay looking at him when something going wrong in my relationship with him, you know, my with my husband, new husband. I won't bring that up in the past. Well, you just like so-and-so. No, we know we do different people. You know what I'm saying? You know, so it's, we got to be healed. God wants to heal from those areas so we can move forward in him. 
so we can stay in the will of God for his for our lives. I want to be in the will of God for for my life. You know, I want to do what he want me to do. I want to say what he want to say. Go where he want me to go. You know, so even on these Facebook lives, you know, ain't no telling who going to be on him. You know, who come on him on the replay. They hear what God has to say. So it's so very important that we uh we we uh wait. Wait on God. I mean, wait, honey. Wait on God because you know, like I said, if I wouldn't have waited on God this time, ain't no telling who I would have ended up with, you know. Or, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? because, you know, at a certain uh, uh, point in time in our lives, you know, we keep piling up all this wound, all this wounded, woundedness and all this trauma. And next thing you know, I, that's how a lot of people have lost their minds, you know what I'm saying? They, they ain't even their right mind because of some things that happened in their past, you know. But I just thank God. That he brought me from all of that, you know, because I almost had a nervous breakdown with my second husband because he all, he took me there, you know what I'm saying? But I just thank God that he got me out of that relationship and I stayed single a long time, celebrate single a long time, and I allow God to come in and heal my heart, heal me of all that all that wound stuff that started my childhood all the way to my adulthood. That God allowed God to heal me so that whenever he did bring the man of God to me, I was ready. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't bringing up stuff in the past because I was ready because I had allowed God to already heal me of those past hurts and pains. And so when we came into the marriage together, we was united and we've been united ever since. You know, we both have about the same kind of personality. You know, he, he has to talk for his business, you know, and I talk because on um, the Facebook lives, but you know, other than that, we're quiet, you know, you know, we get along good, you know, if we get in an argument, we know, we already know, hey, go back and apologize, don't let that, that don't let that go all night long to the next day, go back and apologize, get it right, because don't allow the enemy any place to get in your marriage, to get in your relationship, to try to destroy it, because you know, he don't, he, he has a counterfeit to everything. His counterfeit marriages, the same sex marriages. That's what his counterfeit marriage is. But, you know, God made made a marriage between a man and a woman, you know. And if we got that three chord strand, and here's my, here's my, this, this came from my wedding vows. When I had my wedding vows, this, um, my God's not. This is what it is, three chord strand. It's not easily broken. So I put that, put Jesus in there as that three chord strand. And that means well, no matter what go on in our household, we can we can able, we can overcome it because we're gonna pray together, we're gonna fast together, we're gonna read our word together, we're gonna worship together, we're gonna be as one. So that's why it's so very important that we allow God to do what He want to do in us. So because there's so many other people that's tied to our destiny, us making it to our destiny. So um, like I said, that's all I'm gonna say. I didn't get on here to say a whole lot, but I just wanted to get on here and teach a little bit of what the Lord had given me. About staying in the will of God for our lives, you know, and, you know, just stay in the will of God because whenever God uh, does answer the prayers that you have been praying, it's going to blow your mind. You're going to you're going to be like, wow, God, this is why I had to wait. I understand now why I had to wait because God want to give us his very best. He want to give us the very best of everything, everything concerning our lives. He wants to have the very best of everything. And that included with our spouse, relationships, or whatever. He wants us to have the very best of everything. So, like I said, if you're, you know, if you're anxious a little bit, the, the Word of God said, do not be anxious for nothing but prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God with the peace of God. Well, well you know, let God do what he's going to do. That's all I want you to do. Just like I did with me. Let him do everything he need to do with me. So I can come out as pure gold, as you say, because, you know, when that when that, we go through that refiner's fire, every, all those impurities will drop off of us and no, nothing will be left but the pure gold, you know. And so, like I said, that's it. I'm not going to keep closing, but this is my last closing. I pray someone has gotten something out of this lesson because it truly was a blessing to me. And also don't give up. Keep moving forward. You know, just because things are not happening the way you may think they should be happening, keep moving forward. God has a purpose on our lives and he wants us to reach those purposes so we can be a blessing to someone else. And I pray everyone have a blessed rest of your day. Goodbye.